All right, with this video, I'm going to take you through some more details of using the features and functions of Weebly. I'm using the Pro version, which is going to have some extra bells and whistles, and it is a very reasonably priced if that's something you're interested in, but I'll try to remember the features that are available for the free version. The first thing I want to show you is um, settings, because this is where you're going to do some of the search engine optimization we talked about. You're going to want to make sure that you have a meaningful name in your site title. So whether or not you use this to show up, and most often you won't have it actually on the page, but this is what appears in the tab, and it's also the link that appears if your, search, if your site shows up in a Google search engine. The other thing you want to go is under search engine optimization, and you should be able to provide a site description, and this is the text that appears under that link in a search engine result. And you could also add some keywords if you liked. If you use multiple keywords, they should be in quotes. And then I don't think you have access to the rest of these things. So that's one way to help your search engine optimization. The other way, obviously, is bringing down um, text into your, uh, and using text that reflect the things that you feel people are going to be editing. Now I want to talk a little bit about fonts because obviously there's not a lot of choice up here about what, oh, there's no choice up here about what font. You're getting the font that is part of this particular style sheet. If you really want to try to change it, what you can do is um, use some of your CSS skills, click on design, and then edit HTML CSS. And then what I try to do, so I'm looking at changing this, my title. Um, it looks like that might be the head to tag, and I'm just going to change the size to see if that's true. Yep, so that's the head to tag. So at this point, I could um, maybe try, maybe I don't like that play font, and I want it to be Arial. And you see, then it changes to that, or maybe I would like it to be Helvetica. So you can experiment with your CSS. You can always cancel out of it if you uh, don't like the changes, or if you like the changes, you can go ahead and save them. And what that's going to do, um, I had already saved it as uh, my test site, so it's actually going to bring up another design template that's your own custom template. All right, so let's go back to elements. I want to talk about contact form, because I think that's, uh, let's go to about us here. And let's say, oh, you know what? Not only do I want to uh, have About Us, but I want to have a contact form under that. So I'm going to go to Pages. I'm going to add a page called Contact Us. But then I want that page actually not to be its own piece of navigation, but to go under About Us. So I just dragged it and I landed it on About Us. So if I save that, now I should see a drop down on About Us. I can click on that, and I'm already there. And then this contact form is really uh, handy. I would never publish your email to a website directly, but you can use these contact forms, and you can customize any of these fields. And if you click to edit and go to Form Options, you'll see that it defaults uh, the name that's going to come in the subject is contact form, so you can change that. Uh, the email, where it's going to email, is the email that you signed up for Weebly. You can edit the thank you text or keep it like it is. And uh, then that's a way for people to contact you. And, and like I said, you can add more, you can add check boxes and drop downs and all sorts of other um, information to this contact form if you would like to do that. And we'll save that. Now there might also be a reason that you'd want to have a page again that doesn't show up in the navigation. And the way you do that, also always make sure when you come to this and you want to add a page, click Add Page, because it's very tempting to just go over here and change this, and then you've changed that page. So we're going to Add Page. It's almost always a standard page. And I'm going to call this a super secret code page. And then I can hide it. I'm going to save that. And so it doesn't appear anywhere, and you wonder, hmm, how do I get to that? Well, you can bring down a text box here. And find the super secret code. And we're going to make this a link. 
So when you're making links, you can link to another website. And if you're going to do that, you link, copy the URL here. And then I always use open link in new window. Or you can open to a page on your website. So I'm going to open to my secret, super secret code page. And now that's a way that a user could get to that page, even if I'm not having it show up in the navigation. Now you'll notice I'm not actually able to test this link out right now. Um, I could do it this way, but it's it would actually uh, oh I guess it does it does go there, but it's not um, again the user is not going to see this version of the website. So let's just quickly publish our site. Um, when you're doing testing, normally you want to do all the testing before you publish a website. But unfortunately, the way Weebly works is you actually have to publish the site in order to see how it's going to react in a browser. Uh, this isn't, doesn't uh, offer too much of a problem because unless you've told people where this website is, um, you know, most people are not going to find it. But it's as easy as clicking publish and then clicking that link above here. Hello, there we go. All right, so there's my site, and let's see. Oh, here's my new contact us form. And if I click here, that's how I get to my super secret code. All right, so that all works like I wanted it to. And I can continue with it being published, or I can say, you know what? I'm not ready for it to be published. I'm going to go unpublish it. And say, yes, unpublish. And if I go back here, if I refresh this, it'll say, oh, I don't recognize it because it unpublished that site. So that's how to get rid of it. Let's see, there's a few more things I wanted to show you. Oh, one is widgets. So a lot of things have widgets, like there's a Facebook widget and there's a Twitter widget, um, just lots of widgets. And the way you get widgets on a page is you're going to use this custom HTML. So I'm going to show you how I get a mentor mob um, widget. So these are this is, these are the playlists I create, and if I want to plug one into the website, I click share. And in this case, I want to go get the embed code. So you're always looking for the embed code when you're doing um, a widget, and uh, I like that color. And then here's the HTML code right here. I'm going to copy that and paste it here. Then I like to align it center. And there it is. That's how you get a widget on um, your website. Pretty easy. Uh, oh, uh, then there's some layout stuff you can do. So you can use columns if you'd like to have things um, laid out differently. So I could actually take this widget I just created. If I can grab the blue part of it and I could drag it over here. Now it doesn't fit really well, but it might work better when you're, oh, I should do this next actually. Let's see. There, I could do that. And then over here I could drag some sort of text element and say, check out this awesome playlist or something like that. But that is a way, uh, columns are a way that you can do different layout things and you can also have multiple columns. And the final thing I wanted to show you was um, the multimedia content. So a lot of people were liking to use a photo gallery. And what we discovered is with photo gallery, if you're going to use that and you want to have a caption, it won't, it won't actually show up on the screen. It only shows up when your mouse is hovered over it. But if you do slideshow and you want to do captions, then those captions will show up. And there's different ways you can set it up. You can have it just have it slides or you can have thumbnails, um, however you want to work that. And then really it's just a matter of dragging and dropping images um, onto this to get them to show up. So I think that's all I'm going to take you through for now. I'd love to hear if you have any uh, questions about any of the features of Weebly or things that you've been trying to figure out and haven't worked out for you. And we'll see you soon. Good luck.